good. I'm gonna build something. I had asked you all on the community page, what cordless tool storage cabinet did you want me to make? And 51% over a thousand votes said Milwaukee. So that is what I am going to show you how to make today. And guess what? It only ran me about $30. I'm going to show you step by step. Now the most expensive part out of this entire build only ran me about $19. I got some shelving. You can see right here, I got that white protecting coating on the top. I'll show you that. That was $19 and it's melamine shelving. Don't get the stuff with the holes in it. And then I also got right next to it, it was the trim that we're gonna put around this so you don't see any of the wood. That's really cool. The size of the shelving that I got, it was 15 wide. It was three quarters of an inch thick and then it was also 96 inches long. Couple of different reasons why I went with this. One is it was already white, didn't have to paint. That was great for the Milwaukee box. The other reason why is because it got that scratch proof coating on top and it also has the white on the edges which hides a lot of the wood. So it's actually pretty sturdy, really cheap and it does a great job. Now if you do not have the tools that I'm using in this video today, that's fine. I will let you know what else you can use that you probably do have. But we're going to cut this first board all the way down to 30 inches. Because the board is 96 inches long, you can go 30 inches. I wanted to keep it at an even number. You'll get three cuts out of that. So 30, 30, and 30. You can use a miter saw if you want, but a lot of people might not have that. So just use your circular saw and that is fine. All right, we're just doing the same thing on the board number two. We're gonna cut that at 30 inches and then we're gonna cut one more at 30 inches. So today we're using a Craig jig. And if you do this type of work a lot, you really should have a Craig jig. They are awesome. We're not sponsored by them, but they just really do a good job hiding those pocket holes and they're really secure. So these are the pocket holes that we put in. We put two on the side, three on the bottom, and then two on the other side. But we're gonna cheat a little bit here. I wanna add my logo. After I got done with the pocket holes, I put the logo on, on the front. We're doing the Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. Now, not everybody here is going to have a CNC and you don't need one. You can either throw a decal or a sticker on there. You can also even draw it on there using some carbon paper and just painting it that way. So this board right here is the first board that we cut. It is 30 long, 15 inches wide. The other ones, you're going to cut those right down the middle. And when I say right down the middle, I mean long ways. They're gonna be 30 inches long, just like the longer board. But the width on these, you're gonna come out to eight and 11 sixteenths. So all together, you're gonna have about five boards. The first one, we're gonna put pocket holes down here. We're gonna go two on the right, two in the middle, two on the left. Now, as I'm doing this, I am letting the CNC do the work over here on the Milwaukee Nothing But Heavy Duty logo. That is almost done. We'll eventually have to paint that and I'll show you how I do it. But there it is, it's all finished up. And yeah, it got a little bit of an issue right there with the A, it popped out. But we have our 15 by 30. That is going to be the back board. That is what you're going to see when you first look at this thing coming in. Now, you can see the shelf right here. That is going right in the middle. I brought the first board down from the top 10 inches. You can also see that I have the pocket holes up on the top because you're probably not going to see that as much when this is hanging. That being said, we're still going to hide that. We're going to cover those up. Make sure that you have that at the 10 inch mark on both sides and we're going to actually drill these down into the other piece, that backboard right there. What I did, I just drew a line and that way I can put that board down on top of it and I know that I am straight and level. Now once you get that lined up, we're going to put a little bit of glue in those pocket holes just so we have a little extra strength to this shelving here. So just throw a little bit in there. Again, if you don't have a pocket hole, you can use screws. I would use screws, not nails, but you could use screws if you wanted to from the back side. I would suggest get a Craig jig though if you're planning on doing stuff like this. So we put our screws down inside there and it is nice and secure. We got that glue in there. This is not going anywhere. Now don't forget, we still have those pocket holes in the back that we are going to be using to attach other shelving, but I'm gonna cheat again. Now I'm gonna use the CNC because we want these drills to hang from the bottom. Again, if you don't have a CNC, a jigsaw works 
perfectly for this. You could even use a circular saw if you had to and chisel it out. But once you get those cut out, just sand them down because you're going to make sure that it's smooth for the last step of this build, which I'll show you here a little bit later. And we're just sand, sand, sand with some 80 grit paper. So now that we got the drill hanging shelf completed, those bottom pocket holes are what's going to attach this to the headboard. So now all we're going to do is we're going to take our Craig jig. We're just going to clamp it up like so. You can even bring it down on the table if you want. Again, you're going to add some glue to those pocket holes so it holds nice and firm. Now on the bottom of this shelf, on the edge, what I forgot to do was add pocket holes to each side. You need to add those as well. So don't forget to do that like I did. I was able to go back and add them, but definitely make sure that you add them on each side of that hanging shelf as well all right so now it is time to add the sides and I don't want this thing huge I want this to come down a little bit so we can actually see that logo I want to put it right about there the top of it and then we're just gonna bring it down flush to the bottom of this so we're just gonna measure this out and we're gonna come up to probably about 14 and a half long so take that 14 and a half long you're gonna cut it down and you're gonna add it to the side now another issue is well, it sticks out a little bit too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that up and I'm actually going to mark this right here on the inside, line that up with the shelves. You can cut it on a table saw or your circular saw. Basically, you can use your circular saw to build this whole thing if you want. But we're going to cheat again. We're going to use the CNC after we cut that down to etch the Mawaka IA logo on the side of each one of these sides. So the final width of this actually ended up being like eight and three quarters. Now I actually really like this plain wood look, but because the Milwaukee logo is red, we got to add some paint. Now I would suggest maybe using some stain instead. I think stain would be a lot easier. This is actually stained, but it's very thick. I would have just went with a red, very liquid water base if I had the chance again. And this right here, the syringe, you can actually pick these up at your pack of tans or whatever your you know, arts and crafts store is around you. And basically, we're just going to fill that in, all that wording, with the red stain and then wipe it off. That's another nice thing about this type of material here is it's actually very forgiving. If you get some paint or stain on there, you just wipe it off with some lacquer thinner and it doesn't take the white off. The issue that I had is I really thought that that stain was going to go down faster into that wood. It's basically a plywood, but it just didn't. At the end of the day, you can do whatever you want to fill in these letters you can put paint in there you can put stain there you don't have to put anything in there if you don't want but it's up to you this is how i did it i just used that little paintbrush and then once i did that i just wiped it off let it dry up a little bit and then hit it with some lacquer thinner and didn't have to worry about it anymore now the one thing that's really nice about that syringe is when you got the smaller lettering like this you can really get that stain inside there and not have to worry about it and again just wipe it off all right i'll show you the finished product after with this here let's move it along so now we got both of these sides carved, stained, finished up, and now we have to add our pocket holes. Remember the pocket holes in the back that we added? That's what we're using these for. And like I already mentioned, the reason why I put the pocket holes in the back because this is what's going up against the wall. You're never going to see these, and you just put those pocket holes in, and it's really going to hold that down nicely. Also, because I brought that side down a little bit, I really wish I would have brought that top pocket hole down towards the middle a little bit more. Remember when I told you I added those extra pocket holes down by the actual drill hanger shelf? Well, that's what that looks like. So you definitely want to make sure that you add those pocket holes on the top and the bottom as well. So now that we put our right side on, all we got to do is flip this over and put the left side on. The pocket holes that we added on the back playing a huge role in creating that support for this shelf. Here's just another view of the pocket holes on the bottom shelf where you hang the drills. Now, let me say this, the cutouts for the drill hangers themselves, they are two inches wide, but the gaps between them are three and three quarters. So on the left hand side and the right hand side, you start out with a gap of three and a quarter, cut a two inch, then you go with another gap, two inch and another gap. So now we got that bare wood showing. We are going to add our stripping around here. Really super simple to do. You got to use a heat gun for this, or you can use an iron. Believe it or not, there's glue on the back of this, and it will actually adhese itself to the wood. So we're just going to cut out a strip, and then we're just going to lay it down on top. We're going to take our heat gun. We're using the rigid heat gun. We're just going to cut it like so. 
and then we're just gonna heat it up. That glue on the back will start to melt and it'll actually adhese itself on, on this piece of wood, which is very, very cool and it's actually really sturdy. What else is really cool about this is you can buy this in just regular wood finish or you can buy this white here that we use and it's only a couple dollars but you just heat that up and you can see it's starting to stick. It is really, really cool. You know, another reason why I really, really like this rigid heat gun is because on the electric heat guns, I had to wait for those things to cool down. And pff, this one right here, as soon as I shut it off, it cooled down and then I can start it right back up again. I didn't have to wait for that fan to run through 10 minutes just to cool it down and start it back up again. I couldn't stand that with the electric. Now, I couldn't find my squeegee, so I had to find the closest thing to me, and that was this knife. Just be careful if you're doing it this way. But I'm just heating that up, and I'm just smoothing it out. And once that glue on the back cools, you don't have to worry about anything coming off on this stuff. This stuff is extremely sticky. I really like it, but I'm just trying to get it out. You don't have to worry about bubbles either, but I'm just trying to get it smooth. Another nice thing about this stuff, really, really easy to use. I'll tell you, no issue putting that stuff on. I was really impressed with how well this stuff actually worked out. Just heat it up and stick it. We're also going to hide these right here just by heating it up a little bit. That's it. We'll cut a little piece, heat it, and that's basically hidden. We're going to put this on every piece of bare wood we can find. Up on the top, around where you hang the drills everywhere, and boom! That's what it looks like. There you go. It is done. And you can hang your drills on the bottom of this. You can show this off to your friends. You can have your Milwaukee etched logo, your personalized cabinet. You can do this with any tool brand, doesn't matter. And the most expensive part of the bill was the one sheet of board that I had to buy. It was $19. That's it, I'll put a link in the description below for you. But check that out, you can hang them upside down. You can hang them you know, with the head up. It doesn't matter which way you hang them, it's pretty cool. And what's nice is that board has that coating on there you don't have to worry about paint chipping or anything on there i think it came out pretty cool you can put four chargers up on this thing if you wanted to you could add an electrical outlet or electrical strip out on the back just put a hole out on the side it's up to you whatever you want to do with this but as far as it goes with materials i already had the paint if you got to buy paint you're probably looking at about four bucks for the red and that's really it you gotta buy the stripping for around the edges. That was about three bucks. And the board was about 19 bucks. I already had the Craig jig. I already had the screws. Those are only a couple bucks if you buy the screws. If you're out, they were inch screw because it was a three quarter inch board. But yes, yeah, super cheap. It took me a few hours to make this, but all in all, really no painting at all. It was super simple to do and super, super inexpensive. You might have to buy a couple logos for yourself if you don't have a CNC, it might add you an extra five bucks, but total, I would say no more than $50 to build this thing. And because the material is also really, really light, you're probably only looking at about 15, maybe 20 pounds, if that, for this. So there you go all, the Milwaukee won the vote. I hope you like this. If you do, please smash that like button, subscribe so you see more videos like this, and it always helps to share this out. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed and come say hi to us on the Instagram page at Tool Review Zone. We'll be back with more videos soon.